Well, I haven't done a video for a while. Um, uh, my policy is if you've got nothing to say, don't say anything. But I think there's such a lot happening at the minute in the realm of freedom of speech and, and legislation that's curtailing, curtailing freedom of speech and also action by the state that's curtailing freedom of speech. And things are about to get a whole lot worse. About three or four years ago, I did a couple of videos about the proposed internet harms legislation. Well, that legislation has now passed and there's, there's a lot of videos out there going into a lot more detail and with a lot greater understanding of legislation than I've got. But one thing that we can be sure of, when any legislation is passed that curtails freedom of speech, there are unintended consequences. In other words, what we were promised when the legislation was being framed happened. What we promised wouldn't happen when the legis legislation was being framed happens. And people get dragged into the courts and normally by sinister actors who have put a complaint into the police or Ofcom or whoever. Um, and we see people dragged through the courts, dragged through the legal system and prosecuted under the new legislation that we were told would not have that effect. And of course, we've also seen the, the right to protest um, being curtailed as well. And, and to our shame, people on the right really never did too much about the, ro the right to peaceful protest being curtailed. Some on the, on the left stood against it, but many on the right just ignored it because they were so sick of the Just Stop Oil lunatics doing, doing what they were doing. There's another very, very sinister, um, it's not really a piece of legislation, it's, it's a definition. And it's, a, it's the definition of Islamophobia um, by an all-party committee that, that sat several years ago. It was a definition that was rejected by the, the British government um, as being too nebulous, too cloudy. People couldn't really understand what the definition of Islamophobia meant, especially when part of the definition was talking about Muslimness or perceived Muslimness. And... This definition of Islamophobia has now been widely, widely established and, and embedded in local councils up and down the country. And the majority of those councils have been, have been Labour councils, but some have been uh, Lib Dem and, and SNP and, and, and various other um, shades of the, the political spectrum. Uh, the interesting thing is most of these, most of these councils that are adopting um, this definition would claim to be progressive the parties would claim to be progressive um, but of course everything's progressive until it comes to a protected protected group and then the protected group trumps everything but this is worrying not just because the the councils have adopted this definition of islamophobia but because the labor party has accepted this definition of of islamophobia and According to the experts, and I'm not an expert in this at all, I'm not a legal expert, I'm not a, an expert in, in what will be the consequences of this um, definition being adopted by the Labour Party. But if the Labour Party gains power, it will basically mean there is a de facto blasphemy law established in the UK. Now, in the early 2000s, Tony Blair tried something similar. Under lobbying from the same pressure groups, the Muslim Council of Britain and, and, and others, MEND um, and other groups, I'm not sure if MEND was about then, but whatever was the precursor to MEND, they lobbied the, the British government and, and tried to get an Islamic blasphemy law on the statute book, and I think it was 2004 or 2005. And many people, including me and many other groups, um, lobbied the government back in 2005 to no avail because the Labour Party had a massive majority. I wrote to my local MP, that was then Lady Sylvia Herman. Um, she wasn't interested when I first wrote to her. I wrote to her again, and wrote to her again, and eventually she went and looked at the legislation and realised the danger of the, of the legislation. And she voted against the legislation. Now at that time, the Labour Party had a massive majority in the House of Commons. There was no way that one vote was going to make a difference. But by a set of circumstances that um, we could call miraculous, the Labour Party's majority of, I think, was 70 or something like that at the time, was reduced to one. Tony Blair, who was meant to vote in the vote, didn't go into the voting lobby. He didn't vote. Um, my local MP, who was going to abstain, voted against it. 
and the proposal was defeated by one vote. So why am I telling you that story? If there is a Labour government at the next election, they will enact legislation that makes criticism of Islam a criminal offence. That's what this means, basically. And that legislation will mean that any of us that have spoke critically about Islam, not about Muslims, but about Islam itself, because the, the definition is Muslimness. So really anything to do with Islam is covered by that. That's why it's so that's why it's so dangerous. It's such a broad brush and it's so easily interpreted in different ways um, by whoever wants to interpret it. And that will be Labour Party policy. That's that's the that's the the nailed on um, outcome of this, of, of the Labour Party adopting this definition as as part of their part of their party policy. And it'll basically mean that if Labour win the next election probably within a couple of years, it will be illegal to critique or criticise Islam in any way, shape or form. That's totally different to attacking Muslims on the grounds of being Muslims. That's not what this is about. Um, this is about being able to critique Islam and be able to criticise behaviours that are carried out by Muslims because of what is taught in their scriptures. So this is a very serious thing. I... I I made videos about the internet harms legislation about three or four years ago. Um, I spoke to people about it. And again, people didn't really seem to realize the seriousness of it. I think in the, in the, in the years to come, people will realize the seriousness of the, of the attack on free speech that the internet harms legislation has created. But this is something we can do about, but this is something that we can actually do something about because the reality is with um, this legislation, if the Conservative Party win the next election, or if the Conservative Party have even a small majority, or there's a hung parliament, it's going to be very difficult for the Labour Party to get this legislation onto the statute book. And incidentally, I am not a Conservative. I've never voted Conservative in my life. I live in Northern Ireland. I don't vote Conservative. But, but, to my friends in England, I would highly recommend that you make sure at the next election there is not a Labour majority and that means unfortunately and it would stick in my throat as well you've got to vote for those scoundrels that are misgoverning us at the minute but believe me it's going to be a lot better than voting for those absolute wretches in the Labour Party who are going to cause so many problems um, in terms of not just this legislation but a raft of other legislation um, I personally believe will be a, a de facto open borders policy I believe that that will be back in the EU in all but name. Um, the progressive woke agenda will go into hyperdrive. Now, how that's going to butt up, up against uh, against um, Islam is going to be a very interesting thing to watch. But I think we can do something about it. And what we can do about it is political. And it's making sure that there's not a Labour government at the next election. Um, and you can only do that by exercising your right at the ballot box and not having um, voter apathy, which which is understandable. It's understandable when you look at what the Labour Party, sorry, the Conservative Party have done. But the Labour Party would be a lot worse. See, the reality of the situation is because of what Blair and his minions did in their, what was it, 10, 12 years of power, um, the institutions of power, the organs of power have basically been taken over by the woke karate, by the liberal elite. And uh, the Conservatives have done nothing to reverse that. However, um, if people start and vote Conservative and then write to their MPs and tell them the reason they're voting Conservative, not because they like them, but because they're a lot better than the other lot, then maybe there'll be some change happen. I don't know. But we certainly don't need a Labour government who's going to institute a de facto blasphemy law after the next general election. So it's, uh, it's not looking good if Labour get in. That's all I'm going to say. I'll see you all soon.